Welcome back everyone to the Code Long series on creating a chat application. If you have followed along so far, congratulations, you have created a basic chat application in Flask. Now the final part is deployment. We will be deploying our application in Heroku. In the first couple of minutes of this video, we will talk about using Heroku's configuration variables, after which we will move to the task of deploying the app itself. In case you want to skip directly to the deployment part, just use the link in the table of contents in the description below. Okay, first step. Let's head on over to Heroku. We had already created a free Heroku account earlier. For those of you who are joining us now, just sign up for a free account. It's a straightforward process. Alternatively, you can click on the link above to watch part 1 of this video series where we covered it. Signing up for a free account is easy. Click on sign up for free. Fill in your details over here and click on create free account. Since we have already created an account, I'm going to log in. In case you're watching this as a standalone series, to create your app, just click on new right here and click on create new app. Here you can give your app whatever name you want and it will show you whether the name is available or not. So you can see whatever name works for you. You can leave the region as United States and then click on create app. We have already done this step. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard and you should see your chat application somewhere over here. Since I've already taken the name our chat app, your app will have a different name. Just find the application that you had created in the first video and click on it. This is the app that we had created in the first part of the series. So I'm going to click on this link. This is what I wanted to show you. Once you come to the screen, click on settings. And here it says reveal config bars. So click on this. This is where we can set up our configuration variables. As you can see, there already is a key here called database underscore URL. And the value is the link to our PostgreSQL database. Heroku automatically created this for us when we had set up the free PostgreSQL database. Now, what can we do with this value? Well, in our code, instead of exposing the link and the credentials of our database, we can instead use database underscore URL instead. Let's see how to do this in our code. I'm going to copy this from here and let's go to our application file. To use the configuration variable set up in Heroku, we need to import OS. And this is where we have put the link to our database. So instead of this, we can use os.environ.get and then the configuration variable from Heroku. So I'm going to paste what I copied from Heroku. That's it. That's all that's required to use the config vars which are set up in Heroku. Aside from a predefined configuration variable like the one we see here, we can also set up our own custom configuration variables. So we will do that for the secret key. So this right here. We had briefly touched upon this when we were talking about the secret key in the beginning of the series. If we were to publish the source code online like this, everyone would know what the secret key is. Trouble is that this secret key is our message authentication code used to sign the cookies. If the value of the secret key is known to public, then someone can spoof a valid signature. This makes our app a whole lot less secure we need a way to have the secret key be only known to the application, even if we were to publish the source code online. Heroku's config vars are perfect solution to solve this problem. First step is to create a random secret key. On how to do this, let's refer to the Flask documentation. Quick start documentation. So this section right here, this has some recommendations on how to generate a good secret key. So we're going to follow this recommendation. Let me copy this and paste it to the terminal. Now I already have the terminal open. It is in the directory that we had created for the chat application and I have the virtual environment activated. So I'm going to paste what we copied. This is the 16 byte random string that's generated. Let's copy this from here. And let's go back to Heroku. So we add the new secret key value pair 
Let's call this secret and the value will be the randomly generated string we just copied. Click on add. Next, we update the application with this secret key. Let's copy the key and go back to the application. Right here, instead of just stating the value of the secret key like we have done, we'll use the syntax that we used over here. It's os.environ.get and the name of the key we configured in Heroku. And that's all that's required. So even if we were to publish this source code online, no one can figure out what the secret key was because all it says is secret. It's in Heroku that the actual value of that key is set. Okay, next we need to install the command line interface for Heroku. We'll Google Heroku CLI. This is the link we want, the Heroku CLI. This section talks about how to download and install it. For macOS, there are two options. We can either download the installer and install it from there, or we can use Homebrew. Those of you who are using other operating systems, just follow the instructions given for your operating system here. I will leave a link below to this page. For macOS, I find Homebrew much easier, so that's the one I'm going to use. I could have also downloaded the installer, but this is easier. So I'm going to copy this, go back to the terminal, and paste it here. If you see something like this, then that means you have installed Heroku successfully. On the other hand, if you see any sort of an error, chances are you don't have Homebrew installed. To install Homebrew, you can just copy paste a single line into the terminal. I will leave a link to the Homebrew website in the description below. But on the other hand, in case you do not want to install Homebrew for some reason, then just use the macOS installer from the Heroku website and follow those instructions. Now to make sure that everything is working as it should, type in Heroku login. So it will say press any key to open up the browser. So when it opens up the window, just click on login. And now you can close this. So you will see a confirmation message here which says logging in done. If you see something like this, then you're fine. If not, just go back and make sure you have not missed any of the steps. Okay, if you're able to log in, we move on to the next step. For Heroku to run our application, we need to create a file called proc file. This file will tell Heroku the commands we want to execute when the app runs. And also this proc file has to be placed in the root directory. We cannot place it anywhere else. So I am in the root directory of the folder that I have created for this project, so I'm fine. Inside the proc file, one of the things we need to specify is which server would be used. So far, we have been using Flask's development server. For our live application, we will use the green unicorn server. For the gunicorn server, let's see what the documentation says we need to add. Let's Google Flask socket IO. So we'll go to this link right here. Let's search for the term green unicorn web server. Okay, right here. So it's this section right here, which tells us how to set this up. For this project, we're going to use G event. And since we need WebSocket support for socket IO, we will pick the second option right here. I'm going to copy it from here. I'm going to go back to the terminal to paste it inside my proc file. This is my proc file and I'm going to paste the link right here. We need to modify this a bit. The last part, this right here where it says module colon app. In this last part, just replace the name module with the name of your main application file. So replace this module with the name of your application file. In our case, the name of the application file is application.py. So let's go back here and type in application. So all I've done is I have replaced the word module with the word application. We need to add a special syntax to this line here to tell Heroku that we accept external HTTP traffic from Heroku's routers. For this, all you have to do is add the word web and then a colon. We save this file now and we exit. So if our app is going to be using the green unicorn server and WebSocket, then we need to install them. We will use pip to install gunicorn. 
So we see the notification that the GUnicorn server has been successfully installed. Next, we install G-Event WebSocket. Okay, so I've got a confirmation that I've successfully installed G-Event WebSocket. To use the server, we need to modify one thing in our application file. So let's head on over to application.py, scroll down to the bottom. In the previous video, that is part 12 of the series, we had covered what this line right here does. This tells the application to use the Socket.io server. We don't need this line anymore. Can you see why? That's right. In our proc file, we have already included instructions to Heroku to use the green unicorn server. So we can delete this line completely and just tell the program to run our app. Back to the terminal. Next, we need to tell Heroku all the packages that we have installed for this application. The way we tell Heroku about this is by creating a requirements.txt file and save the names and version numbers of all the packages installed. Fortunately, there's a quick way to do this. Just type in pip freeze and then greater than sign requirements.txt. This will create a file called requirements.txt, which will have a list of the names and the version numbers of all the modules we have installed. These are all the packages that we have installed in our virtual environment. You may not recognize some of these because they would have either been installed by default when we installed Flask or as dependencies for other modules. We don't need to be bothered with the contents of this file as of now, but as long as you have a requirements.txt file, which has a list of modules you have installed, you're fine. The next step is to commit the changes to the Git repository. So let's commit the changes. Next, we need to add a Heroku git remote to our local repository. So the syntax is Heroku git colon remote hyphen a. Then we need to put the name of the app. This is the name of the app we had set at the beginning of the video. We had used the name rchat hyphen app. So it's this name right here. I can copy this name and paste it here. So that's done. The final step is to push the files from our local repository to Heroku remote. So it's git push Heroku master. So this is the link to our application. Let's copy this and let's test it out. Okay, so the application seems to have booted up correctly. Let's try registering someone. Let's call it user13. The password is test. Okay, the registration page seems to be working correctly. Let's try logging in the user. Perfect. So there is our chat application. And he can join different rooms. So there are, these are the four different predefined rooms that we had set. Let's send a test message. Okay, so everything seems to be working as it should. If you have made it to this final video, then give yourself a pat on the back. You have successfully created a chat application. Now you could just copy this link and you can send it to your friends and you can start chatting using your own application. This is just the starting. There are tons of improvements you can do, especially when it comes to the security front. We have barely scratched the surface. And in terms of the UI UX, there are tons of changes that we can do. I hope the series helped you out a bit and this is one application in a long series of applications you would be creating. I wish you all success. Don't forget to hit the like button and if you want to be notified of the latest content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. See you later.